So the next thing we are going to discuss about is pulseless electrical activity. We've already spoken about pulseless ventricular tachycardia. That means the heart was beating so fast that you had no pulse because it was basically pumping out nothing uh, going into a ventricular fibrillation. And now we will speak about pulseless electrical activity, which is basically the severest forms of the bradyarrhythmias like pulseless electrical activity. Like the heart is hardly pumping out anything, but because it is beating very slow. So pulseless electrical activity. I tell you it will hit you bad, you know, hit H-I-T-I-M-I, -I, I'm telling you, and there's H and T, and not only there's there H and T, there are 5 H's and 5 T's which cause pulseless electrical activity, and I'll help you remember them, you know what, some people tell me, I'm less of a teacher, I'm more of a poet, let's teach you that way then, let's make medicine interesting, for the 5 H's, just remember five forces of nature, five elements of nature, fire, water, land, sky or light, whatever you want to say. And what is the fifth one? Ground, soil, right? So, remember water, less of water, hypovolemia. Remember air, less of air, hypoxia. Remember land or soil less of soil or more of soil, soil contains potassium, so hypo or hyperkalemia. Okay, we are left with light, light brings temperature, so lack of temperature, hypothermia. And we are left with fire, fire, the sun has fire because of hydrogen and helium ions, if there is excess of that, excess of hydrogen ions, acidosis. Right? We are done with the 5 H's. Easy. 5 elements of nature. Water, less of that. Hypovolemia. Say it with me. Say it with me. That's how it becomes easy. So, water, less of that. Hypovolemia. Air, less of that. Hypoxia. Soil, less or more of that. Soil contains potassium. So, hypo or hyperkalemia. Light brings you temperature. Less of that. Hypothermia. And fire, sun has a lot of fire. Hydrogen and helium ions. They become excess. Excess hydrogen ions. Acidosis. Good. What about the T's? I'll tell you bro or sis whatever the case is my friends that T is tension a lot of tension in life right there are three things which can really harm you in life and you need to think about T over there what is that one is uh, tension in your life which is pressing upon you the second T is basically something there lying in front of you something really preventing you from going ahead and uh, that is a blockade and do you know a synonym for blockade starting with T? Thrombosis, yes. Thrombosis is a blockade, blood doesn't flow through. And third T is toxin, toxic people in your life. So these three things affect you in your life. External pressures, mom, dad telling you study, study, study. Then a friend who is not letting you study by chatting with you on WhatsApp or whatever, social media all day. And third, toxic people in your life who always play with your good and bad points, mingling with your relationships. So these three things we are going to study over here. So the first one, lot of tension or pressure. If the tension is from your lungs, you call that tension pneumothorax. If the tension is on your heart, you call that tamponade, tamponade, whatever you want to call. That is your cardiac tamponade. And then you have the thrombosis which we were talking about. That means any blockage in your life. People who don't let you utilize time well could be in the pulmonary circuit, could be in the coronary circuit, and then you have toxins, toxic people in your life always playing the bad old evil man or woman, as the case may be. So, we told you H, we told you 5 T's again to summarize thrombosis, blockages in your path could be coronary or pulmonary. There could be toxins, toxic people in your life and there could be external pressures. Pressure on the lung or through the lung, that is your tension pneumothorax and on the heart, tamponade, cardiac tamponade. So, how do you approach this patient with pulseless electrical activity? Of course, you could just find that the person has no pulse altogether but maybe some electrical activity of very slow bradycardia on the monitor 
or what you could finally see is the person does not have an systole at all so this bradyarrhythmia has actually gone on and caused this person to develop an asystole so how do you how do you check out if the person you think has an asystole confirm the asystole go ahead place your stethoscope on his chest place your thumb on his carotid and see if there's no systole good and pulses electrical activity assess the blood flow again see his pulse and if you are pretty sure that his blood is no longer flowing and there is asystole altogether if you confirmed it the next thing you need to do is to identify which of the five h's or the five t's he is suffering from usually it will be due to that you need to identify and treat the cause and to make life easy i'll just tell you three drugs you will be using over here see harrison has given you a big table on this but it was so complicated i thought i should make it a bit easy for you so how do i make it easier for you i give you a mnemonic for the drugs and the mnemonic is ina ina mina dika you've heard about that so this is ina the famous song ah uh, yes so e would stand for epinephrine n would stand for nhco3 or sodi bicarb and a would stand for your good old drug which you use in all forms of uh, bradyarrhythmia as a tropine yes what would be the dose of epinephrine 1 mg iv and you can repeat it 1 mg iv and you can repeat it if you want what would be the uh, dose of sodium bicarbonate 1 mg equivalent per kg right and of course iv and what would be the dose of atropine 1 mg iv 1 mg iv and please note you will be giving only if there is a bradycardia only for bradycardia if it is just uh, pulseless electrical activity i don't think you'll be giving it but if you do have a concomitant bradycardia due to which you're giving it yes then you will be giving a tropine 1 mg iv and what is the good news i mean not really good news but if your atropine fails then of course you would either go in for a external pacing that is your transcutaneous pacing external pacing yes or you would going for the pacemaker wire wired pacemaker with electrodes that was um, pulseless electrical activity but what if the person is not so bad the bradycardia is not so bad and you still can salvage him with some amount of pulse remaining that means the person is, has bradycardia but has not gone into pulseless electrical activity or bradyarrhythmia leading to asystole right so the person has bradycardia but still has his pulse so we talked about different things over here just uh, try correlating that we've spoken about your uh, pulseless vt ventricular tachycardia heart was beating so fast that you lost pulse the heart did not have blood to supply itself no no input no output then you had the heart was pumping so slow that you lost the pulse pulse electrical activity asystole and now we are talking about symptomatic bradycardia but you still have pulse so i should say that it is a uh, relatively uh less complicated affair and no not less complicated but less severe so what should be your approach to symptomatic bradycardia with pulse so let me give you a steadfast mnemonic which should help you down the line there is one major thing you do and then there are three drugs so the major thing i'm going to discuss about is the transcutaneous pacing transcutaneous pacing along with three drugs and the mnemonic is aed not automated external defibrillator but atropine epinephrine and dobutamine atropine epinephrine and dobutamine <coughs> all of them will be given iv so just let's discuss about the doses of the drugs first iv atropine usually you'll be giving 0.5 mg a maximum of 6 doses can be given at an interval of every 3 to 5 minutes every 3 to 5 minutes every 3 to 5 minutes you can give a maximum of 6 doses which would bring it to 0.5 into 6 3 mg maximum good epinephrine 
you can give an IV epinephrine drip, never a bolus. What would be the drip? 2 to 10 micrograms per day. 2 to 10 micrograms, not per day, per minute. <laughs> per day, the person would die. <laughs> right. So, micrograms per minute. Yes, 2 to 10 micrograms per minute of IV epinephrine drip. And IV dobutamine, IV dobutamine, you can give 2 to 20 microgram per kg per minute microgram per kg per minute coming to the affair of transcutaneous pacing i would like to discuss some things over here with you that um, yes you see how they are placed i'll just show you there are two electrodes or patches on the skin which you place one of them is placed vertically below the right clavicle you can see on the picture over here it's placed vertically below the right clavicle infraclavicularly and the second one is placed horizontally below the left nipple or at the level of the left nipple horizontally below the level of the left nipple or at the level of the left nipple and what are the guidelines for operating this transcutaneous pacing yes we would want to maintain a heart rate of around 60 to 80 per minute synchronously definitely so it should be synchronous and you will be increasing the amperage of this device by 10 milliamperes till you get a capture beat. Till you get a capture beat on the background of broad complex QRS. On the background of broad complex QRS which basically signifies your carotid impulse. And you will be giving atropine also till you get this carotid impulse. That is the most important thing. Carotid impulse. So just have a look over here what are what are we meaning to say you will place these two electrodes or the uh, paces on the chest and uh, after that what are you going to do you are going to have to check the ccg look very carefully you want to maintain a heart rate of 60 to 80 beats per minute as a, at a synchronous rhythm in the person so that and uh, you'll keep dialing the clock of the device increasing the amperage by 10 milliamperes as i already told you see 10 milliamperes till on the background of a broad complex qrs these are the broad complex qrs as you'll see see this one is a broad complex qrs this one is a broad complex qrs all these are broad complex qrs these these right so all these are broad complex qrs more than 2.5 small squares on their background, you are going to get this capture beat. Capture beat. That is what you want. In a background of broad complex QRSs, you want capture beats. What does this broad complex QRSs signify? What do these broad complex QRSs signify? That whatever device is transcutaneous spacer which you have applied is being able to generate a normal carotid pulse. Your heart was almost stopping due to this bradycardia. But since this transcutaneous spacing has been applied, the intrinsic activity of the heart is being able to generate a carotid pulse this carotid pulse will give you the uh, broad complex qrss which we will be seeing right so since you've given this transcutaneous pacing and you've made the heart function so it will be able to maintain a cardiac output which will be giving a carotid pulse which will be represented by this broad complex qrss in the background and on this background you'll be getting capture beats which i've just showed you with these red lines and when you get these capture beats on the background of these white QRS complexes representing the normal carotid pulses or carotid impulses, you know, okay, my transcutaneous pacing has been successful and I have been able to manage this patient of symptomatic bradycardia with pulse.